talking about um sacrificing and being the best that you can be there's this great article that i saw recently on um marca right the national newspaper of spain the one that usually kind of breaks all the big transfer stories and it's a story on zidane right um i'm guessing this is kind of during for the run-up of him you know returning back to real madrid um you know the lesser the lesser about Zidane's legend the better if you don't know about Zidane go and shoot yourself whatever but Zidane Zidane the great Real Madrid Juventus France n- numerous other um clubs uh player recently had a little short interview right and the interview is titled Zidane as a player I slept well didn't go to bars and only drank water I know it's this it's a little bit OTT because of course you know this is Zidane but I'm glad sometimes you have a I'm glad we have these little snapshots into the highest performers out there right? i'm glad sometimes you know we don't really hear much from zidane he's a man of a few words right but i'm glad when they do speak they ask these kind of questions about you know how they were able to kind of you know play at such a high level um, um during you know the latter stage of their career and i like that most of the time there are those genetic freaks that exist right there are those players out there who can go out you know do lines of coke drink loads bang tons of prostitutes and still be able to go score a hat-trick on a sunday but I'm I'm glad that some of the best performing athletes that we have at the moment in all the various different sports that you can name, from basketball to football to tennis, for the most part, live an incredibly disciplined lifestyle, right? An incredibly disciplined lifestyle where they sacrifice nearly everything for their profession or for their career of choice, right? In order to kind of reach the heady heights that they want to reach. And sometimes they still come up short. And I like that because I think sometimes for us mere mortals, right? For us regular civilians, we can sometimes get a bit, you know, we can sometimes... um fool ourselves into thinking that what they're doing isn't that difficult right that you could do it too um that it doesn't take that much effort blah 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 but sometimes i like in black and white when they just say to you hey this is what i did to in order to kind of get to what i want to get to imagine doing that for 30 years day in day out christmases birthdays um anniversaries whatever it may be called imagine the amount of stuff he has missed out in his career overall but zidane kind of um, mentions in his article right and the article says the following Zidane's journey to the top of professional football has been a long and uh, odious one. The Frenchman spent the last five um, five years of his playing career at Real Madrid, right? The last five years, which is fucking amazing. Win the Champions League, La Liga, um, alongside the greats Ronaldo, Real and Luis Figa. However, but his first attempt at the game weren't quite glamorous. It was quite clear. It was clear to me from the start, he told um, o- OTRO. Um, all I wanted to do was play football, but I had difficulties at school and my parents told me off. So it was a bit of a bad kid, right, growing up. I knew full well that I didn't have a, a an, an ideal attitude. Then one day they told me, we know you have something, you're on your mind. So do what you want to, so do what you want to do. Once I had my parents' permission, right, which is something, again, something that goes without saying, I think for me personally, I've never had my parents' permission in the things I've done. I've always kind of had to fight and convince them that what I'm doing is the right thing. And again, I don't necessarily think it's a bad idea because I think sometimes coming from a household where everything's a challenge, everything's a no, I think it toughens you up for the outside world. When someone then tries to tell you what to do or how to do things outside of your house, you're like, go fuck yourself, right? Uh, I've had enough, I've had enough to hear my mum and dad telling me it, you're not going to tell me it. But what, again, like I said before, I think it just strengthens your argument. It strengthens your resolve. You're a little bit more ready for the world when you get no's at home. But I'm also aware that sometimes with some kids, the the the, um, the idea that you have permission, the idea that your parents have said you're allowed and you've got, that's not in the back of your head. That's not worrying anymore. You're not worrying that um, you're not kind of, it's not holding you down when you go out on trial. I think that's really important because I've been to many a football trials with my little brother and you can tell from the kids hanging around, the ones that have permission from their parents and the ones that don't. And it weighs down on them when they're playing, right? They're not even expressing themselves in the way that they should be because they're afraid of what's going to happen when they get back home, right? Um, but again, I think there's different ways of parenting. For me personally, I quite like the idea that I've always had conflict. It's always kind of a wall to hit, a wall that I had to kind of scale over, dig under, go around. Um, because again, like I said, it trained me for the outside world. Um, once, I had my, once I had my parents' permission, I focused on giving everything to achieve what I wanted to achieve. Um, on arriving to, at Cannes, his first club, I saw professional training and told myself I want to do this, right? And that's always a great thing. I remember the first time I went to a, a semi-professional football football ground training session and they've all got the great kits on, they've all got nice boots, the, the grass is cut immaculately. Like, it's just like, wow, right? You're like, okay, this is where you want to be. Um, from this moment on, I did everything I could to become the best. After going to Cannes at the age of 17, Zidane changed his lifestyle in order to get to the top of the game. I slept well. I wasn't an idiot going around bars. I only drank water and did stretches. 
I put everything into becoming the best player possible. I told I had to do it. I, I had to do it at all costs. Um, this is how I could make my parents happy because it was my life. But I also did it to make them proud. To make yourself known and then play, you had to be good. Not like today. First, you had to show that you are different to everyone else because at the time, there were a limited number of players, only one or two youngsters per team. Today, it will change. It, it goes much quicker. And as for players, they are no longer afraid of making mistakes, which is true, right? But that's the big thing here, right? I slept well. I was not idiot going around bars, only drank water and did stretches. Imagine the era that Zidane grew up in, right? Imagine that kind of era of football player where, you know, standards weren't as high as they maybe are now. There was maybe a, a bigger dearth of talent worldwide, but standards weren't as high. So you could probably get away with doing a line or two, right? And if you if you don't believe me, look up, look up the player Antonio Cassano, right? He's got a very interesting past and he was in a similar kind of generation as um, Zinedine Zidane, right? A lot of players out there who were able to kind of, you know, have a drink, go out, date models, go to fucking film, can go to film... Um, um, uh, what you call it, premieres and stuff, whatever it may be, and just live that lifestyle and still be able to balance things around. Like uh, David Beckham was probably a good example of it. But you have to imagine, if you're a David Beckham, you're a Zinedine Zidane, you're already involved in a celebrity lifestyle of being, you know, maybe you've got like a, a, a very popular spouse in David Beckham's case with Victoria Beckham, or in Zidane, you're kind of the marquee, I guess, um, athlete. There's already obligations on you in terms of sponsorship and marketing, right? You're having to devote a lot of time into kind of getting that shit done. And then on top of that, you're having to maintain the standards of a professional football player, right? You want to win the Golden Boot. You want to win the Ballon d'Or. You want to be the world's best player of the year. These kind of constraints that are kind of like banging away at you. Some of them as well are external. Some of them are internal. Then, to you to, then for you to decide that you have no vices, right? That you're going to commit to a life of sleeping, right? Not going out around bars and drinking only water and doing yoga. That's insane. But that also shows why he was able to achieve such insane goals, such insane achievements in his career. There's no, there's no, Um, I think a lot of people, I think especially when you read people's comments and shit on stuff or replies, I know for the most part people are trolls, I get it, I get it, but there is sometimes, I do look at those comments and think, there are some humans behind those comments. And I think sometimes when you look at these people from the outside looking, I know for me sometimes it can, and even speaking on my end, I know it, sometimes it can be a little bit, oh, how the fuck did he get there, right? You can, you can have those feelings inside your head, but I like, I'd want to assure most people that there are no coincidences in the world. There is no coincidence. There's no lucky break. There's no, um, oh, this person knows that person. That's why they're, they're where they are. No. For the most part, it's fucking doggy determination and it's sacrifices of a level that most people cannot even comprehend, right? It's insane level of sacrifices that kind of um, eventually will lead to you getting to somewhere that you want to get to. Now, it's not always, it doesn't always lead to you to get into the promised land, but that journey is what life is about, right? There's no point of, living if you don't go through that journey but sometimes i think there is a lack of understanding of just how much it takes to achieve what you want to achieve and that is an example of it right like i said like zananza Zidane made it pro quite young he probably had every every opportunity to kind of indulge in his vices or temptation come his way and he didn't and then we saw the fruits of his labor later on down the line he's able to maintain a very high standard of playing all the way until when he retired and that's fucking incredible but again like i said there are no coincidences. He slept a lot. Um, he didn't go out at all, right? Um, I, I guess it might help because he, he might be religious. I'm assuming he might probably is re quite re um, heavily religious, but still, just because you're religious it doesn't mean you adhere to what your religion says. He made a decision to kind of be steadfast, put his head down, work, and then look what happened. It will happen. He's he's kind of hard work matched his talent, and I guess that's somewhere people again need to kind of realize. Like, if all the talented people in the world decide to work hard, we're all fucked best key right so the only thing we have is hard work we have to hope a couple of talented people you know think their shit don't stink they won't turn up and then you get a chance to show up but if all talented people in the world had work ethic that was someone that doesn't that wasn't talented everyone would be fucked in this world but it's, it's not that's why it's a bit more evenly spread and you can do what you need to do but i thought that was a quite interesting article it's on marker you can find it on the interwebs and it's titled zidane as a player i slept well and didn't go to bars and drank water very very little, little again a little small article but something that i think is a good reminder as to how what it takes to achieve um top top honors in any kind of arena